Hello everyone and welcome back to the Quail Vlog. I know, it's been a while, we've had a lot of stuff going on, but holy fuck do we need to talk about Undertale. Alright, so we'll get into it in a minute, but first, you know, just a, a couple of, like, housekeeping things. A lot has gone on since last we interneted. The final StarCraft expansion came out. We played a bunch of shows. We did the show at the Proto Men in San Francisco. We did the cover of Obstacles from the Life is Strange soundtrack. And then we had the Chiptune Festival, FreeFest NorCal, which was just amazing. But in addition to playing it, we were also kind of helping run it. Our drummer, Joey, was the stage manager. Like, it was just, it was crazy. And then I did a bunch of live streams on Twitch. I played through UN Squadron and Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. But in addition to that, we've been busy with a lot of stuff that we are gearing up for in 2016, which is already looking to be a pretty crazy crazy year for us, so we're, we're stoked. So, let's dive in. Undertale is a game made by a guy named Toby Fox, who's a musician and a game developer. He got known internet-wide by making a really, really interesting ROM hack for Earthbound. All of you who don't care at all about Earthbound are probably like, oh my god, why does he keep talking about this game? But Undertale is more or less, uh, I would attribute it being kind of a spiritual successor to Earthbound. But just the basics. I mean, the striped shirt, young adult protagonist. The graphics have a lot of similarities. When you get into the combat system, it at first looks like it. I honestly don't know how to describe this game to most people because it is sort of a JRPG but there's so many more things going on to it. When he funded it on Kickstarter, it was touted as this game where you can play it as a pacifist. Now, most people that are familiar with JRPGs know that it's usually to go out, find things to slay with your sword or lasers or whatever, gain experience points and level up and get stronger and get more stuff. So a game that's a similar design to that where you can play through the entire thing without ever killing a single monster. I don't know, that's interesting to me. It's a really touching experience. The, the backstory is a war between humans and monsters and the monsters lose and they all get sort of put down into this underground realm where they're like sealed away and they can't get out. I'm gonna do my damnedest to not spoil anything. But every now and then people climb up the mountain where the barrier thing is and fall into the underground and end up in the monster world. And so you, the player character, are one such person. And so you land in the underground and you meet this uh, sentient flower being named Flowey. Some people call him Flowey. Flowey's sort of like your tutorialist person. I mean, at first, because then there's other characters that you meet, you interact with. But the characters in the game are very, very well fleshed out. And it's all text-based, but every single one of the characters, I think every single one of the characters, has a different sound uh, as their text goes across the screen. <laughs> And a lot of them have different fonts too. I should also mention that there is a free demo of the game that is like sort of a tutorial, but it's the entire beginning section of the game proper is available as a free demo. And so as you go through this underground world, you can play it like a traditional JRPG. You can attack the enemies and kill them and get experience points and level up and you know do the whole thing. Based on your choices in the game, you get a different ending. And there's guides and stuff online, like how to get the true pacifist ending and how to uh, you know, play what's called the genocide run where you just kill everything. It, it's kind of eye-opening in that regard because if you view a game where you run through and kill everything as it is presented to you, as most games are, then you kind of go back and like other games, like you know, I'll think about like my playthrough of Chrono Trigger where I've slaughtered hundreds of thousands of monsters. And yeah, when you refer to something as the genocide run, it just kind of but as I mentioned, uh, Toby Fox, the creator, is also a musician, so he did the soundtrack. The soundtrack is another one of those things where it feels like a spiritual successor to Earthbound because there's very, very similar tones, uh, instrumentation used, but because he doesn't have the limitations of the Super Nintendo, this is a PC game, by the way, it's on Steam. He's able to do all kinds of other things. A couple of songs have like, you know, like full like string arrangements and it's it's neat because you will go from a song that is super 8-bit chip tuny to something that's a little more Super Nintendo synth based, maybe sampling like a, that, that like earthbound trumpet, you know what I'm talking about? And then a song that has like a cello doing a cello thing. Undertale cannot recommend this enough. You get really emotionally attached to these characters that are just, you know, text blips. And you may or may not get to- <laughs> Shit, okay, no, I said no spoilers. I said no spoilers. I'm gonna have to edit that out. So yeah, please, 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 please check it out. If you have checked it out, tweet at me because I cannot talk about this game enough. Holy shit, 98% of the 12,000 reviews on Steam for this game are positive. It's got a 10 out of 10. Like, Jesus.
When I knew that I was gonna be doing Undertale for this episode, I pretty much like five minutes before I pressed start, I was trying to figure out a way to tie in the song of the vlog, and there isn't a way to do this. So it's total segue, total tangent, but here we go. The song of the vlog is by our dear, 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 dear friends, Rintin Tiger, and the song is called Speak With Me. They put a music video out for it a couple months ago, and it's just amazingly DIY, but it, it's adorable, and I love these guys. It's two brothers. Kevin plays guitar and sings harmonica as well, and then Sean plays bass and sings. Fiddler, uh, Andrew, uh, on drums in the back is just, like, they are just this powerhouse San Francisco trio. They're known for just, like, one hell of a live show. They should not be able to make as much noise as they do. And, like, I mean that in, like, the best possible possible way. Nobody walks away from a Rintin Tiger show thinking like, oh yeah, that was boring. We go way back. We've been playing shows together sort of on and off for, I want to say since like 2011. They played our CD release for After the Lights Failed. And then we just did a show with them in San Francisco. They have this yearly Halloween show uh, at a place called Bottom of the Hill called the Haunted Hoedown. They dressed up, all the other bands dressed up. We did like a full Street Fighter costume thing and played Street Fighter songs in the set. Like it was, it was a lot of fun, but uh, they know how to fucking throw a party. And I love them and I love this song because it's so in your face and it's like a minute and a half long and the video is just fucking rad. So yeah, Rint and Tiger. As far as the band goes, I uh, kind of covered that a little bit. We just did the Halloween show, the cover, and we've we've had a lot going on sort of behind the scenes uh, in preparation for some stuff that we're gonna be doing in 2016. So like we're super stoked, but also like everybody's busy. But if you are in the Bay Area at all, we are doing our last show of 2015 at our sort of home base, our favorite place to play, the Art Boutique. It is Erin's birthday show. Erin is our bassist and backup vocalist. So for her birthday, we let her pick her favorite venue, her favorite bands that she wanted to play with. A three, that's not a two. We let her pick the set list, including some songs we haven't played live in a very long time. And there's also the added bonus that because it's a headlining show at Boutique, we get to end our sets with a group cover where we get everyone to join us on stage and play a song together. And we are really excited about that. That's in San Jose at SLG Art Boutique on Friday, November 20th. So this Friday. And the band's on the bill. Us, of course. Danger Maker from San Francisco. They're this uh, dark indie pop. We played with them at BFD and they're like super good friends. Like they're amazing people. Also the Y Axis, because we love them. They were the song of the vlog several vlogs ago, really good band. And Aaron's old bandmate, uh, a guy named Zen Zenith, that is his real name. He's the host of the Dr. Hoodlum's Dr. Who podcast, really talented singer songwriter. And he used to be in a band with Aaron called Please Do Not Fight. And he is coming up from LA to not only do a set, but I think they're also gonna do some Please Do Not Fight songs together. So that should be pretty rad. So to bring it all back around, you need to play Undertale and you need to check out Speak With Me by Renton Tiger, cause that was the song of the vlog. I mean, also you should like follow them on social media and stuff. And if you're in the Bay Area, Come see us at our boutique for Aaron's birthday show. It's going to be pretty fun. As always, you can check us out on iTunes and Spotify. We're also on Apple Music, Pandora, Bandcamp. We have music available. If you haven't heard our stuff, tell a friend, because first and foremost, we're a band. So we're obviously going to be focusing on the music. But when we have time to do stuff like this, we're totally going to. But you know what? There is only so much quail to go around. And sometimes music takes precedence over the extraneous stuff like this. Not that I don't love doing it. No, the vlogs are a blast, and I'm hoping to get back on a somewhat regular schedule. All right, people, go. Be free. Baby sloth walks on the beach. Baby sloth walks on the beach. Baby sloth walks on the beach. Baby sloth walks on the... No.